So if you would take your foldable, and we are starting a new unit or chapter on kinematics, which is one-dimensional motion, and it's the study of motion that really deals with position, velocity, and acceleration. It's the things that do not include forces. So you're gonna put these notes on the inside of your foldable in this large blank area on the inside there. So 1D kinematics, like I just said, it is position, velocity, and acceleration, and we're looking at, in this first slide, distance and displacement. So distance is the total path that you travel. There is no direction, and it's a scalar value. So if I go up with A, I go across with B, I come down with C, I go across with D, and I come down with D. If I add all of those together, that's really going to give me my total distance, which we'll sometimes use that symbol as D for distance. When we talk displacement, though, displacement, though, is from the very beginning to the very end. So starting at this point where I started with A and moving to this point where I ended with E, then that is going to be my displacement. It does include a direction, so it's going to be a vector. And we would say that the symbol for that is going to be an X, which will be your resultant value. Now, sometimes we'll use Y if we're talking in the Y direction. Sometimes we'll use R if we want to talk about any direction in general. And how would we determine the direction of the displacement? That would be using the vectors. So we can do all of this with vectors and that would give us a certain direction for that. Now, that's the difference between distance and displacement. Distance is a scalar, displacement is a vector, and those are both gonna be measured in meters. You might say, I walked six meters, that's a distance. I walked six meters toward the refrigerator, that's a displacement. Now, speed and velocity, would be the next step to that. And that's really when we talk about how fast we're going, which is our distance divided by our time. So our speed symbol is gonna be a V. We're gonna say that that is the distance divided by time. There's no direction, it's a scalar. Now, if we talk about the same thing, but we tack on a direction, then that's really gonna be a velocity. It's a displacement divided by time. Or another way you could talk about this is it is speed in a direction speed in a direction. And the equation for that is going to be the position or the displacement or distance over time. And then our unit for distance or displacement is meters. Our unit for time is seconds and we come out with a unit of meters per second. So both of those will be measured in meters per second, but one of them will have a direction and one of them will not. Now, when will your velocity be positive and when will it be negative? Well, it will be positive if you are moving in the positive direction. If you are moving in the positive direction, terrible positive there, positive direction. So if I'm moving this way, or if I'm moving this way, both of those will be positive motions in the positive up or the positive X direction. When will it be negative? Obviously, if you're going the other way. So if I'm heading in the negative X direction, it's gonna be negative. And if I'm heading in the negative Y direction, it's going to be negative. So negative X and negative Y. Now on here, you should be about maybe down about halfway here. We have one more slide we're gonna talk about, and that is the acceleration. So if speed and velocity are a change in position per time, then what's gonna be a change in velocity per time? And that's really what acceleration is. It's changing your velocity. So how fast you change, how fast you're going. And again, we would take our velocity divided by time. Remember that velocity is measured in meters per second. So I'm going to take that and divide it by seconds, and that's how I get this meters per second squared. Now this two doesn't affect anything in the equation or anything in your calculations. It's part of the unit. So meters per second squared is the unit for acceleration. And remember that you can change this two ways. You can either change how fast you're going with the magnitude, or you can change the direction that you're moving. And whenever we go to an amusement park, we really bank on those two different rides. The acceleration is what you feel in the pit of your stomach. And you can either feel that by going in a straight line on a roller coaster when you're heading down that acceleration or a direction. When you change the direction, those are going to be all of your spinny rides that change your acceleration and give you that feeling in the pit of your stomach. When will my acceleration be positive? Well, if I look at moving in the positive direction for velocity, 
if my acceleration is positive, then I am speeding up. If my velocity is positive and I am accelerating in the negative direction, then I would be slowing down because I'm acting against the velocity. Vice versa, if I'm moving in the negative velocity direction and my acceleration is negative, then what's happening? Because they're both heading in the same direction, I would be speeding up in the negative direction. And if my velocity is negative and my acceleration is positive, because they're acting against each other, so to speak, then wouldn't that be causing me to slow down? So you'll notice that if the velocities are in the same direction, if the velocity and the acceleration are in the same direction, then I end up with the speeding up. And if they are in opposite directions, then I end up with a slowing down. So there are three equations that we can use to describe these with four variables. And if you look at the front of your foldable, then those three equations are written on the front of your foldable for you. The position equals velocity times time, one half at squared. Final velocity equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. And the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two ax. And we'll talk in a different video about how and where we get those. What I want you to look at for now, though, is that there are five variables involved with that, and I want you to write those over here, that we have our displacement that can either be written as an x or y. We have our initial velocity, which is a vi. We have our final velocity, which is a vf, and we have our acceleration, which is a, and then t, which is time. So all three of these equations involve the variables that are listed here, those five variables. And each equation has four of the variables. And so off to the side, what I want you to determine is which variable does each equation not have? And you'll notice that those are the ones that are in the white. So the first equation, it does not have final velocity. I want you just to write that off to the side, VF. And then the second equation, it does not have position. I want you to write it off to the right position. And then the third equation does not have time. So go ahead and write T off to the side of that. And that'll help later whenever we start doing the, the sample problems. So now, talking about sample problems. If you flip to the inside and to where it says horizontal, I want you to put this sample problem. So pause the video for a second, write out the sample problem. You are sitting at a stoplight when the light turns green. If your car accelerates at 3.85 meters per second squared for six seconds, then A, how fast will you be going after the six seconds? And B, how far will you be away from the stoplight? Okay, so I'll pause for a second and let you copy that. Now, the first thing that we want to do in any problem that we do is we want to find out what are we given or what do we know. So whenever I look at the problem, I can say, hey, we have a meters per second squared. So isn't my acceleration going to be that 3.85 meters per second squared? We also have a for six seconds and seconds, remember, is a unit for time. So if each of the equations has four variables, then I have to know three of the givens in order to find the fourth one. So there's one more here that's hitting in this, and that is you are sitting at the stoplight. So if you're just sitting there, isn't that gonna tell you that your initial velocity is zero meters per second? And what are you looking for? So you're looking for, for part A, how fast will you be going, which is gonna be your final velocity. So what equation has A, T, V, F, and V, I in it? You can look on the front of your foldable for that. So which one has A, T, V, F, and V, I? Or you could look at it and say, well, which one does not have position? And that's gonna be the second one. So for that part A, I'm gonna say VF equals VI plus AT. My VF is what I'm looking for. My VI is zero. Acceleration, 3.85 times a time of six seconds. And when you punch that into your calculator, you should get 23.1 meters per second. 
And that's your answer to part A. Now, when you go to put this in buzz, don't forget to put in at least three significant digits because if you put less, it'll put you outside of the range. Now for part B then, we're looking for how far, which is really gonna be that X value, right? So if I look at the other two equations, I really could pick either one of them, whichever one uh, is easier for me to do mathematically. So if I do X equals B I T plus one half A T squared, I'm looking for X, my initial velocity is zero, half of the acceleration, 3.85, times the time squared, six squared. And when I punch that into my calculator, I end up with a position of 69.3 meters. Now, could I have used the other equation? Sure, I could do VF squared, so this would be or, equals VI squared plus two AX. My VF is gonna be what I found up here, so 23.1 squared. My initial velocity was zero, two times an acceleration of 3.85 equals X. So if I square this, divide that by two, divide it by 3.85, then I'm gonna get an X position that is the exact same thing, 69.3 meters. And notice you could do it either way, you get the same thing. And then again, don't forget to put three significant digits in the bus. So that's sort of a quick summary of 1D kinematics that involves position, velocity, acceleration, and a short horizontal sample problem.